All right, good evening, guys. As you can see, I've got my palette all set up for tonight's uh, painting. Um, now, thank you for your comments and voting, or the people who did vote. There weren't many votes, so the two people who said about to finish the uh, Imperial Wizard and the horse. So I've got the, um, the Magic Supplement book here, and that's the Supreme Patriarch of the Colleges of Magic there. So we know the barding on the horse will be yellow. It's not one of the, because that's why I chose either that or the High Elf um, Silver Helm, because white and yellow are usually colors that people do not wish to paint and they just do not, they try to avoid them at all costs. So this might be a good tutorial to tackle that. Uh, of course we covered yellow before, but um, it might be interesting on a cavalry model. Um, and I, to be honest, I don't really have much experience painting cavalry because all the armies that I had didn't really have um, cavalry cavalry as such, you know, like actual bard, barded cavalry. Um, yeah, so when I paint my, eventually paint my Empire Army, I'll have a lot more cavalry experience um, in that. So, but I love all the cavalry models and yeah, I thought it'd be a good change just to change things up a little bit. And um, let's see how we go with this. So I've got uh, on my palette, I've got yellow, um, some beige, and some of that orange uh, from the Vallejo A Air range, but any orange will do. And I'm just going to want sort of a fairly warm um, warm yellow. I'm just putting, adding some of that beige just to increase like the, pig the coverage of the pigment because otherwise it becomes very, very um, translucent, that yellow, so. And the pigment doesn't get a lot of coverage. Okay, well, let's try it. Let's try it with that one there. And I was gonna, yeah, the uh, horse is unprimed in white. I wouldn't prime it in any other color, it certainly wouldn't use gray or light gray or anything like that. White would be the only uh, way to prime it. And uh, talking about primers, yeah, I probably have talked about it before, but yeah, now my preferred choice of color is white and I think everything will be white, even my Skaven, I'll prime, prime white. Um, yeah, I just prefer um, using white primer now. As an undercoat, um, did in dark grey for a long long time before that was light grey and I did black before that and then white before that so I'm sort of really going back to how I really started off and you know everybody started off with a white primer that was always in the the Citadel painting catalogs that you got you know with your goods and um, with your games and that kind of thing um, which is good because we really ni need a nice bright color to get those colors so bright you'll, you'll definitely notice it when you have it um, a darker primed model uh, the colors will seem a lot less vibrant the you know the, the undercoat allows it to allows those colors that you're painting to really be more illuminated But yeah, I'm really excited to do this now. So thanks for your suggestions. Um, God, there's so many other miniatures I want to paint. Uh, I know that um, Rafael is looking forward to the River Troll tutorial and I've got that guy um, based now and not primed. So I'll just wait for a few more days until I've got a lot of stuff ready to be, to be primed at once and just do a massive priming session so I've got basically my summer covered um, so I need to get all my Skaven plague bunks um, ready to go and the screaming bell ready to go uh, I've got some more pack masters I need to get prepped up I found some more uh, orc boar riders so I'm sort of keen to just finish the whole unit off and have 10 uh, all up. So I'm going to get those um, ready. Okay. 
So we'll just give it in one, one coat to begin with. Now is this yellow too? It must be yellow as well, shouldn't it? Was that the actual horse? Is it the actual horse color? That must be the horse color. The barding must end here. Mustn't it can't can't do. Must this must all be part of the barding too, I'm sure of it. I'll need to check that because yeah, I don't know. Um, I actually don't know at all. Could be completely wrong there, but anyhow. Won't really affect anything too much if I'm wrong. Um, I'll just need to go over it in like a dark brown, like it's pictured in the photograph of the studio version. Yeah, it's really hard to get into those nooks and crannies under here. I don't know how I'm gonna do that with the horse. Maybe the studio guys actually didn't base it first and they actually painted it before basing the model, which would make a lot of sense actually now. Um, and it probably shows my inexperience of painting cavalry. Maybe Dan will have some good tips on doing that as he has paints Bretonians and he's got a, uh, a lot of experience in doing cavalry. But yeah, looking at it, I don't think I've ever played a lot of games with cavalry in it, to be honest. I've got dwarves, I've got no cavalry. Um, now I'm doing Skaven, they've got no cavalry. Uh, all goblins. Well, actually, all goblins did a lot of, you know, spider riders and um, um, the wolf riders. So they're all sort of like these um, monstrous mounts that they're they're riding on. But nothing, nothing like an actual horse, horse kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm guessing that it should be the horse, the natural colour of the horse, horse's um, hide or skin or whatever you call it there. And that barding must only come to this se these sections, two sections here and cut off there. All right, well, let's have a look at the picture again and just see if I can see if that's the case by looking at the picture. Yeah, I can't really see it. Actually, on the on the underside, they painted it white under that barding. They probably just left it as the actual um, primed colour. So, hmm. All right, let me know, guys. You guys who have more experience with painting cavalry than I do, I can't find any other photographs with uh, with him in it, with that with that horse or that particular horse style. So yeah, please tell me in the comments. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the horse's colour, not the barding. Um, it looks like it just cut, cuts off from the from the front to the back. That's that makes more sense to me. Wow. Okay. So that's something uh, <laughs> I've learnt, or not learnt, or still yet to learn. Now. What else, what else is news? Um, well, I did make a post today in the Hero Hammer forums, or the group, sorry, in Facebook, about, um, you know, where are you located? Like people in Australia, I was looking for people in Australia and, and to give a bit of a shout out to um, the members in that group and, you know, where they were located in Australia. As I did post on the Old Hammer Australia group, the, the idea of maybe having some kind of um, a small tournament next year playing 5th edition fantasy with the guys down there and sort of like a bit of a uh, almost like a reunion if you like <laughs> not that I I, I think I, I did play um, I did play 5th edition in a tournament in Brisbane many 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 years ago I do remember that and maybe 4th edition too was it 4th no it wasn't 4th edition it was definitely 5th edition yeah Never played a tournament in fourth edition, but um, and it was there I met uh, a lot of other guys that I eventually uh, started hanging out with and playing games with um, as they lived in Brisbane. And um, trying to think, think of the place that I went to. That was a shop there. It was quite cool actually. It was like an independent game store, and they carried a wide range of all different various 
products from various different manufacturers. I think it was called the War Games Warehouse. I think that's what it was called. So people in Brisbane might know that, that name and may have even been to one of their events. I went to that one and I went to the 40K second edition tournament back in those days. Uh, for fantasy, I fielded a high elf army and I must have went to another one because I fielded my night goblins as well when I, when I had enough to actually you know, play in a tournament. But the first one I went to, I, I took my high elves there and I was seeing today that I, I did have the the fifth edition high elf book because I did actually use them um, in fifth edition, but I just can't remember much about them because I was looking at the silver helms and looking at their uh, points cost and their equipment uh, upgrades and what they can take. I'm sort of wondering if they changed that in um, fifth edition because it seemed quite pointless. Like I think with all the extra barding and. Um, what else could they take? Something else. They're, they're, they're fairly, they're cheaper than the, the um, Dragon Princes in terms of point cost, but once you upgrade them, they're almost the same point cost, but they get one less in uh, as a saving throw compared to the Dra Dragon Princes. And I don't think, I think maybe their stats are, maybe the weapon skill is not a good or maybe something like that. Maybe some other small little difference between the two, but I can, I, I can understand why people would not really favor the um, silver helms that much over the over the um, dragon princes but yeah maybe someone knows that maybe there is a difference between the fifth edition um, army army book to the fourth edition one um, that's still in the UK and I won't be able, I won't be able to see that until it eventually gets here when, whenever that's going to be maybe next month or something Now, um, all right, we'll give it a couple of light coats there. Um, and I just, I sort of just want to concentrate on the yellow for this video. I don't want to, I don't want to start painting other, other sections just yet. So just concentrate on the yellow. Um, as that's sort of drying, we're just going to leave that to the side and I'm just going to take this guy back. And, um, yeah, this, this guy's nowhere near finished and I still need to do a lot of work on this guy. So I know his beard is going to be like an orangey color and I, I need to reference the uh, reference the book as well for his color scheme because it is quite um, the detail and it's quite intricate and there's lots of different colors that they use on this guy. So let me just quickly check. Yes, yeah, so he's got like an orangey beard. He's got the book is blue. The cover of the book is blue. Um, part of his staff. Now that actually had broken off, so I had to uh, repin it on there. So it's on a different sort of angle compared to the photograph. But um, was it half? It's kind of green. That snake on it is green, and the key that he's holding is in silver. It's got a black trim there, and that's actually red on the front of his hat. So I'll need to change that, and probably just touch all the yellows and reds on his uniform as well. It's a real pain to paint, actually, that guy, because all those flames on his um, on his uh, attire there. Yeah, you need to I try to black line those, and wow, that's that's a really pain in the butt. So I think. I saw another version of it that I uploaded, uploaded before from some Sebastian. He painted his and I think he inverted it so the flames are red and the inside's yellow. That probably would have been an easier choice but I wanted to keep it the same as the studio one. So I'm just gonna, uh, you know, just try to get that yellow looking a bit more vibrant now. I'm just gonna add some more of that yellow, uh, orange to the base of that yellow there. And uh, with our beige, start just highlighting it up a bit. Um, yeah, so getting back to our topic of that tournament, 
<clears throat> yeah, sort of threw, threw a few ideas out there to the guys and just asked, you know, where they were located and that kind of thing and trying to find a capital city that would probably be best to host it. Um, now, according to the guys on the Australian Old Hammer group, you know, they already have an Old Hammer sort of day that they um, get together in Brisbane somewhere, um, maybe once a month or something like that. Okay, so, but, but the majority of people that you know would be interested are all in Melbourne, and I noticed that on the Hero Hammer group too. They're all in Victoria, so uh, which is good. I think it's a it's a, it's a beautiful city down there, and um, it'd be wonderful to have the opportunity to go there uh, again at some point. I've only been there once, and I'd love to go there again. Uh, my last trip was only very brief. I think it was only for a day or something, I think. So I didn't really get to see much of the city or any of the sites there. So yeah, that'd be great to go down there again and have a look. And they've got quite a large gaming uh, scene down in Melbourne too. It's always been uh, regarded as probably, probably the, the biggest gaming scene, I think, maybe. I could be wrong, but... I don't know why that is, maybe because it's so multicultural. I mean, Australia's a very multicultural country anyway, but maybe a lot of um, a lot of Brits migrated there or other European people migrated to, uh, to that part of Australia. And because wargaming is, you know, like I think most people see it as kind of like a, a European kind of a hobby, maybe pastime. Yeah, so I'm not sure why that is, but maybe someone can tell me, I don't know. But yeah, like where I'm from on the Gold Coast, it's like nothing. It's like no one, no one really games down there much at all. Yeah, so as you can see, this miniature is a real pain. I think most people would not want to paint, paint it in these colors at all. And I'm just being quite rough and layering down all this orange here and um, because I need to do a lot of cleanup as well and this miniature is going to take quite a while but I think you know once I've done it um, once it's finished and once all the all those little flames on here uh, sort of outlined properly and it's all very well defined and everything will look, should, should look quite good So, getting back to that, the other uh, topic, um, the Old Hammer Group, uh, Neville, as a mate in Brisbane, um, he suggested, why don't we, why don't we ask like each, 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 each state or each community or maybe maybe make it worldwide that we have like some kind of um, like a worldwide campaign that. You know, for logi for logistics reasons, maybe it's just easier for people just to play locally, and then we can res record the results on the day, and then make it some kind of like a worldwide campaign, which sounds fantastic. I think that'd be awesome, so that we can also participate here in Japan as well, and wherever you are in the world, you can all, all you know all participate, which would be fantastic. Uh, obviously, after the whole this whole pandemic is well and truly put to bed. Um, can we even think about doing anything like that? Um, and hopefully that's that comes sooner than later because I'm sick of it. So... Yeah, then we can... Um, we can organise something like that. That'd be awesome. So I've got zero experience in doing it. Maybe you guys do out there. Uh, I don't know if Neville himself has any experience in doing it. Maybe there's some kind of white dwarf issue that they did something like this that we can draw from experience on there. Uh, what they did there or something like that, maybe. But yeah, that'd be quite cool. Um,
You could even do it so you have like uh, teams, like you know, like me, like you, yourself and a partner. Um, you know, you both have to play either good or evil, and you have to play another against another pair of people that also have, you know, obviously the opposite. So they're playing the good good guys, you're playing the evil guys. Um, so you could do it that way as well. Uh, that'd be quite quite cool. So you can involve more people, more of your friends, and have have fun together. Uh, we just want to make it so it's it's non-competitive. I want to s stay far, far, far away from that as much as possible. You know, I had sort of uh, thought. Oh, that's the wrong color actually. Um, I actually thought about doing a um, like a round robin tournament type thing here in Japan at some point, maybe later, like probably you know at the end of the year or something like that, because we want to do something special at the end of the year. But um, I think that that'll be okay because it's just a friendly kind of thing. But as soon as people, as soon as you say tournament, then people get turned off by it, you know. And it's not um, it's not that I want to I wanted to make it a competitive thing. It's like get like a get together, having some games, playing multiple opponents in really small games, doing the magic item drafting that we talked about on the podcast. And I think that'll be really fun to do. But uh, let's see, let's see what comes of it. See, see what people think and see what the feedback is. Give it time. You know, you need a lot of time to plan that anyway. So it's not going to happen overnight. But if we can involve everybody in it, you know, wherever you are, wherever you're living, that'd be brilliant. I think that'd be awesome, and then people can take photographs or video on the day and you know we can bring the community together in that sense so oh, this is not coming out at all no I'm not going to push it any harder because it, otherwise it's just going to explode and paint's just going to go everywhere so let's get another color I need to clean that out um I need to clean this lid too it's good to have it if you've got really dirty paint lids. That's one thing with the Vallejo that I don't like is that um, paint will get sort of, you know, uh, overflow. I think that's, I don't know what that is, but you'll get like that. You'll get a lot of paint inside your lids and that kind of stuff. And um, maybe that's to do with like air pressure or something like that. I'm not sure, but you get like these big bubbles and you get it every now and again your paint pots but um, yeah cleaning that up it's a good idea now I've got paint all over my hands which is great it's been a really rainy cloudy stormy day actually we've got quite a lot, a lot of storms this afternoon so yeah it's been great to do a bit of hobby when I had a chance later on um, still doing the rebasing of the miniatures and yeah, still really enjoying that. Um, I've got some more stuff done. I've got Grom finished. Uh, I've got the Fanatics done, the the Netters, uh, not the Netters, the um, Squeak Herders done. Uh, another Shaman done. So I think that's all the Night Goblins finished. And then I started pulling apart all the orc, orc boys, and that's when I thought I can probably um, paint another, another, um, another four of those, another four or five of those to get uh, the full unit of ten. Which is a pretty expensive unit to field, but and you know, cavalry is always like a cavalry is always like a big risk to take, I think, because okay, you, you're getting you know generally you're getting a a, a a bonus when you charge because you you're definitely taking spears or lances or whatever you you're um you're armed with. They're generally going to be like forty odd points a model if they're like heavy cav. 
um, then we're fairly well armored. Like, you know, I, I usually take, if I've got the freedom of taking magic items, I'll take the um, banner of shielding for them to get their, uh, to get them down to like a one plus, or is it two plus? Might be two plus, sorry. And then, because they don't take heavy armor, that's right, so it's down to two plus. Uh, but they get a plus one because they're on the the snorter, the um, the, the boar, and um, so you're looking at about forty six points, forty seven points a model. So it's quite an investment, but the boars get you know get a decent attack. So you suppose you're really paying for two two models. I guess that's how they work it out, but. You know, you know, you might only get one rank if you're lucky, you know, if you just take five, or well, you're not gonna get any ranks at all, but, um, so for example, I norm normally take like light cavalry, I'll take 10 models uh, as a minimum, really. But um, with the heavy cav, you know, as soon as they, if they fail a, fail a, um, a combat and they get over overridden or something like that or they just get destroyed outright it's like a huge bag of points that you, you you're um, taking down so they're always quite a liability so depending how you use them I suppose to get the most effect out of them and get their points back but I think I was lucky in the I think the first game so the first game or the second game we played with Justin with um, my Orc and Goblins. It might have been the first game. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was the first ever game we played, actually. And he took Undead and I took my Orc and Goblins and I took I had Scar Snake as a leader, my general, my warlord. And he... In the list I had the... a unit of five or six, I think it was six. That no, was five, I think. Five um, of the um, Orc War Boars, and he killed every single one except for two. I had my, just my standard bearer, and I think it was a hero or something left in it. But they managed in the end to charge and kill his, I think it was his necromancer. It was like left in the open. Not in a unit, so I think I just got lucky in that regard. And then I could charge the flank, the flank of some zombies. I think he had. So yeah, positioning is like really important for them, so they don't get countercharged, and that you're trying to maximise the threat value of them charging the flanks and rears of of your enemy units. Um, yeah, you know, taking advantage of their speed and getting around the flanks and that kind of thing. Um, light cable by goblins just pff, do nothing every game. But so usually, like I mean, as soon as I make a leadership test, the leadership test is going to be like on fives, and it's just they're out of there. You know, they just don't last. So, but they're cheap. You can get a whole unit of ten for about one hundred thirty points. A bit extra for the um, if you're including a standard and musician. I don't think I'd, I never take a musician with my uh, light cable anyway. It's got this orange brown I'm going to use for that beard of his. Be painting a bit of my scenery too. It's got my watchtower, and I'm kind of happy with how it's turning out. I'm not overly happy with the actual the um, balsa construction work that I did on it. It does look really rough, and it just it doesn't look anything like the original, and it just hasn't turned out that well. But that's just my inexperience of doing terrain that's sort of sh shining through there, and I need an awful lot more. Uh, practice with making terrain and um, which is something I think most people can agree that you know we leave out as a second kind of uh, 
not a second kind of, but like it's always it's always taken as like oh yeah, I'll get around to doing it, you know, once I've finished painting my armies and that kind of thing. And um, it's it, you know unless unless you're really into making terrain and you really and that's like your main sort of hobby for some people it is more so than painting armies and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you, you're just definitely going to get better at it and you're going to get um, better in certain techniques and stuff. I just haven't dedicated enough time to terrain. But I love, you know, having nice terrain on a table. It just, it sort of enhances the visual aesthetics of the board you're playing on and um, it sort of gives the the models and the armies that you've spent all that time painting uh, a nice sort of canvas if you like to play on so I think I might just paint all this red actually under here Yeah, so you want to really do it, give it just, do it justice, and do a good job on it. But um, I've, you know, decided to go the cheap, cheap option in my terrain, and just use, which is perfectly good, you know, you know, um, just use the the most cheapest base materials that I can find to make everything with. Um, but I suppose all all together, it's been quite an expensive thing. Like just the flock and that kind of stuff. Buying enough flock to flock a table and all the other terrain elements is not not exactly cheap uh, when you have to order it for overseas. But um, yeah, but for the the building construction and that kind of stuff, it's you can do it really cheap. And I, I really prefer that more than the MDF stuff nowadays. But I'm sure people are going to disagree with that and say that MDF is much more, uh, well, it's definitely more sturdier and it's going to last the, the test of time. Like my stuff's all made out of balsa and cardboard and that foam board, mirror board, whatever it's called. And, you know, that's really fragile and all your hard work can go, you know, can be, um, can be ruined really easily. I actually dropped, dropped uh, the, um, the roof of the tower the other day and I did actually damage some of the cardboard edging on it but now it's, it's given it a bit more character and a bit more sort of like a worn effect to the tiles so it's not such a biggie right I just need to just stretch a little bit there side for now. And just going back to our horse again. Yeah, with the yellow it's going to look very streaky. You'll get that sort of streaky effect. On the yellow you just can't get, a, get around it. That's, that's why I'm putting that beige in there as well. Just to give me more coverage. It's going to um, cover that white a lot lot better I think so let's give it another coat and uh, yeah I'm glad that people when people um, respond or send me a message to say that they're painting along with me with doing these videos and just listening and that kind of stuff that's really great I'm glad I'm sort of you know not that boring to listen to uh, I wouldn't want to listen to my voice all day but you know if it's if it's working, that's that's great. I'm I'm happy. You know, that's one thing with the podcast. I wasn't really keen doing it by myself. I wanted someone else there with me, and I wanted guests on there. You know, I don't want to be talking the whole time. It's not my 
uh, Forte. And I um, I enjoy listening. I enjoy listening to podcasts and I enjoy listening to other people talking about hobby stuff and that kind of thing. I was a big listener to the Meeples and Miniatures podcast before they decided to end it. What other podcasts that I listen to? I think that was the main one, really. I think that's one I really enjoyed the most. I always have some really good guests on there, even though I'm not a historical gamer, but um, yeah, a lot of that stuff was, a lot of their content was focused on historical games. But yeah, I really enjoyed listening to people like Henry Hyde from Battle Games magazine. I don't know if he's still doing Battle Battle Mag. I think he's doing his own Patreon thing now. Um, he, he has his own podcast, which is great. I just don't have enough time to catch every single episode, but he does upload them onto YouTube for free. The old, the old, um, old episodes, which was great, and um, I love listening to Henry. He's a really good guy. He's really quite knowledgeable about uh, a lot of things in the hobby, especially the wargaming hobby. He's a really good. Um, he's amazing at calligraphy too. If you see his calligraphy work, it's incredible. Really outstanding. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, Henry actually used to play Warhammer Fantasy. Um, fourth and fifth edition, I think, and he used Skaven, and he used to play against uh, his mate uh, Guy. And uh, I don't know what Guy took. I don't know what army he took, but I think they just got sick of it in the end, and they just didn't decided not to play it anymore. But I think he's got uh, Henry's got his godson now into playing um, miniature games, and he's using his advanced hero quest models to do like some kind of skirmish style. Um, game with him, playing with the miniatures, which was quite cool. Yeah, so I'm definitely more of a listener, more than a, more than a wanting to create podcasts. And remember guys, you know, I'm just doing this out of my phone, that's it. Everything I record, everything I edit, uh, the podcast is done through the phone, everything. I'm the most untech person you'll ever meet. I hate technology, it, it always breaks and I destroy everything I touch. So luckily this phone is still going and um, and I'm able to do this through my phone. If the phone died, that would be it, I think. If I couldn't get a new phone, that would be the end of everything, I suppose. <laughs> um, you know, ideally you'd want a you know, 4K uh, camera recorder with a decent amount of memory to store you know long videos and to and it like a desktop PC to keep all your um, all your saved uh, videos and that kind of thing no, I just don't have all that I don't have all that kind of equipment which leads me on to the next uh, topic because um, Raphael was talking about wanting to see that Taurus that Chaos Dwarf Taurus painted and I did mention to him, and I did mention before, that I'm going to do that in a special kind of video series. And I'm also just announce it now that you know I am working on a Patreon page. And before you decide to turn off <laughs> and walk away, um, it doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that I'm stopping doing what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm still going to uh, commit to doing lots of videos and lots of content on YouTube for free. Uh, it doesn't mean it, it won't change anything. It just means that. Um, those big projects, those really, uh, you know, major projects like, you know, characters on dragons like Prince Emmerich or something, you know, when I eventually get that, or Altharion, um, maybe Teclas and Tyrion, um, you know, big characters on big mounts or monsters or just, you know, big, large projects that will take a long time to do, uh, I'm going to put on a Patreon, like a Patreon account at the lowest at the lowest and cheapest um, entry point. So I'm not sort of going to make a million dollars and run off to some faraway island for the rest of my life or anything like that. It's just a way that if people were interested in, in uh, supporting me, um, that's one way they could do it. And it just that money will just go to buying paints and brushes and maybe prizes for the channel. 
um, more miniatures that I can use to paint on the channel. Uh, that all costs money, uh, money that I don't have for that kind of thing. Even though I'm very, I feel very blessed uh, to have the stuff that I do have um, from the very generous people out there that um, have done trade deals with me and uh, have sold sold me stuff from their collections, which has been awesome. Because I'm not selling anything. Well, I, I'll, I'll trade some stuff if I if I have absolutely no need for it, and I've done it in the past and sometimes regret it, sometimes not. But uh, to, if I'm helping somebody out, then and it's sort of in getting them into the hobby again, then I don't mind doing it. And I certainly don't mind giving away stuff. Like uh, I prefer doing that sometimes, just so that um, it's just a nice gesture that, and people remember that, and they can get into the hobby that way. So, yeah. So that's coming down the tracks. Nothing, nothing immediate in the future. It'll be just something that I'm going to have on the sideline that may or may not gauge any interest whatsoever. It could be complete flop. It's just something that's, um, you know, it's not going to cost me any money to do, and I don't know anything about Patreon that much. But it's something that I'm going to um, just put out there, and if people want to um, get in on that and um, see what else I'm doing behind the scenes and that kind of thing, then great. But if not, then not. So, but like I said, and I'll reiterate that it's not going to change anything here. Right, so I'm just sort of adding lighter and lighter layers as I go with that beige. more yellow. Well, I'll just knock the guy over. I'm just gonna wash my my water out. That's looking pretty dark and pretty terrible at the moment. So I should really wash that out soon. I'm coming to 42 minutes anyway, guys. So I might just wrap it up soon if that's okay with you guys. And catch you in the next one. I just want to put some more yellow on this horse. And. Um, Should just go over nicely now over that um, that beige mix that I put on there, so you get more of a yellow colour. Because we want it quite vibrant and not too orangey, but the orange should the orange should be in the those recesses more, and that yellow should be on the areas where it should be highlighted naturally. Now I was talking to Justin about having a game, maybe I talk, talked about it last week, uh, yesterday. I keep forgetting what I've been talking about now, so if I'm repeating myself, I do apologize, but yeah, we're talking about having a game, hopefully next month. Uh, which means I really need to get my act together and get my um, stuff finished and painted for my Skaven. I uh, get all the terrain done, finished, because he'll, he'll be coming up here. We're not going to the store. I want to just avoid going to the store uh, for the foreseeable future. I mean, I feel I feel bad for um, Mori, the guy who, who runs the place. It is actually closed. I think it's going to open up tomorrow or open up today or something like that. Or it, maybe it's still going to be closed uh, because of um, from you know being advised and that that type of thing, so I hope he's going to get compensated by the government financially for his loss of income, as I think everybody should be. Uh, well, uh, you know everybody should get some kind of form of uh, support, for, especially for those guys, you know, independent guys. You know, the huge multinational companies they've got uh, lots of profits stored away for those rainy days and um, little guys like Mori don't so 
but yeah, that's the plan, having it up here, which would be good, you know, be better sound-wise anyway. And yeah, look, you know, we can't wait to get, get together again and have our games, play our games again, it'd be awesome. Some really sore shoulders, wow, terrible. So that's probably my cue to to stop here soon, guys, sorry. My old body, it's not, um, not as young as it used to be, that's for sure. But anyhow, that's that's the start of it anyway. I need to go over it a few more times. Yellow is just one of those colors that you need to really work with to get right, to get the right balance between uh, light and dark and um, get the right saturation uh, levels and that kind of thing as well. But it's a good start. I think we, we made good progress on it anyway, and hopefully, and maybe the next video or the video after that, it'll probably take a few videos, I'd say, to get all the freehand done and that kind of thing on it, but maybe I'll just do the barding and the free hand um, as the first part and then do the rest of the horse as the second part maybe. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I should have some photos. I'm not sure if I've got any photos saved on my phone today to show you, to showcase uh, somebody's work that I found on Facebook today. But if I do find something, I'll pop them in there. If not, have a look at the video I uploaded, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? Uh, I think it was yesterday. And um, that's like a 26 minute long uh, photo dump of all the, all the images I found online uh, recently on Facebook with some really nice paint jobs from uh, people around the world uh, of miniatures of this, of this era. So yeah, go and check that out and get inspired. All right guys, take care. I'll see you in the next one. All right, see ya.